right so in this video we're going to see how we do like predictions how do we do predictions right when we are doing predictions there are roughly two two steps we are going to do the first one is going to be to divide the predictor space we're going to divide the predictor space right divide the predictor space uh, so we're going to see the possible values for uh, for x1 up to xp into into j distinct non-overlapping regions r1 and stuff like that so we're going to we're going to do our r1 our region number one all the way to let's say rj depending on how many regions we're going to have and then for each one of those for each one of those regions we're going to put observations right uh or let's let's just say for every for every observation for every observation we we like send it to the right region right to the right region we are going to put it into the right region and uh, make and make the same makes the same prediction make the same prediction and in our case in our case since we're doing regression trees it will be the mean the mean of that region the mean of that region that's pretty much it that's pretty much how we do our predictions using our regression trees right so if in step one we get two regions r1 and r2 right like if if we get region number one and region number two and the mean the mean for this is 10 and the mean for this for region number number two is 20. it means for every given observation that falls in region number one every observation we are going to say the prediction is going to be 10. and then for every observation that falls in region number two the prediction is going to be 20. it's going to be 20 right a question will arise is that how do we then create these regions how do you create these regions this is a very good question right in theory the regions could could have any shape that is the, the in theory but then it is easier if we have high dimensional rectangles um, or boxes for simplicity and ease of interpretation of the resulting predictive model like we did previously we said everyone wears years less than 4.5 we didn't care we didn't say we didn't say oh yeah we're going to say 4.5 is here and then we have a wiggly wiggly line like this it's difficult to interpret but then if we just have a straight line we'll be like if you are below this line we are giving you the salary so rectangles and boxes are easier for us so in theory you can have any shape but i think for boxes are much much easier they're much easier so that's what we'll be sticking with to get these regions we are going to minimize there's a bit of maths here, but if you could not understand, this course is not really about the mathematics behind behind these algorithms. It's just discussing the the high level theory about. Uh, so some parts, especially in the upcoming upcoming videos and chapters, there's some maths that's going to come in. I'm going to try skip part of the maths and not prove anything, like I I promised in the beginning of the course. So, but the the explanations should make sense. The explanations should make sense. So what are we, what we are trying to minimize is we are trying to minimize our j equal to one. So for all regions, R j, and for all observations that we say are are falling in that region, two so a squared like that. So it's sort of like it's it's an error term. It's an error term. We are trying to minimize this error term here. Minimize this error right it's saying for all regions we're trying to minimize if we say if we say the eighth observation is falling in region number one it's falling in region number one we're going to get an error term and if we say it falls into region number two we are going to get an error term so we're trying to minimize that summation because if the summation is giving us is, is giving us um okay let me let me explain that again you see this mean here this mean here what this y r j is it is the mean response mean response for training training observations training observations within the jade box jade box 
So that's the mean, right? That's the mean. So for each observation, what we're trying to do is to say, okay, here we have the mean. When when, 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 when this is this R one, this is the mean y y hat R one, and this is this is y R two hat y R two hat. That's the mean, right? So what we're trying to do is for each observation, we're going to subtract. The, the the value let's say for observation number one is um 60 or let, let's just say uh 25 is 25 what we're trying to do is minimize 25 minus 10 for region number one and 25 minus 20 for region number two say uh, adding this to a 15 what we're trying to do to do is minimize this error minimize this error of putting of putting the of putting the what this the observation in the wrong region in the wrong region we do not want the gap between the observations value and the mean of the region to be large because if it's large it means we have put this observation in the wrong region and our error increases so let's say let's say we have an we have like this example we had an observation that we had a y of 25 but then the mean the mean for region number one was 10 and the gap is 15 if we had put it in region number two the gap would have been five with the mean for number two so which region should we put it in we should put it in region number two so as to minimize the error that's basically what i'm saying for each region we are going to say for each observation which which mean are you very close to and we try to minimize we, we will minimize the region we will minimize the distance between the observation value and the mean for each of those regions that's what we're basically doing and then we'll we we'll start splitting our data to say, okay, you belong there, you belong here, you belong there, you belong here, using those means. So that's what we're basically trying to do, right? So the problem is, it is not possible for us to consider every partition. We'll be like, oh no, okay, so what if, what if we what if we had a partition for it to be 10 and 20? What if we partitioned it to be 15 mean so that everything that falls here is a mean of 15 and everything that falls here is a mean of 5? So there are many partitions that we can play around with the means, but it is very it is impossible for us to partition this and say, okay, what if R1 is here? What if R2 is here? What if R2, R1 moves to this side? And then the mean becomes this. It's very difficult for us to do that. So the, we are going to just do theory that we are going to skip with a, a lot of detail because it's like technical we're going to skip in but we are going to do something called uh we use a top down a top down a, a top down greedy top down greedy approach we're going to use a top down greedy approach um called recursive 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 binary splitting recursive binary splitting so what this basically does is it starts at the top of the tree if you remember the, the tree that we drew previously so at that at that top part every observation is in a single region because we are starting at the top here we're starting at the top of the tree right so all the observations they are together they are together and we're starting here and then we'll successively split as we uh, we split this predictor space as we go down down the tree right each split is indicated via the new branches down the tree so like yeah we'll split the tree split split the tree and then when we get to this level we can split the tree again and then when we get to split the tree on the left hand side we can split the tree again until we get to the terminal nodes until you get to the terminal nodes right so we, we will recursively binary binary means two right it's it has something to do with two so we recursively say split it into two when you get here split it into two when you get here split it into two recursively like that recursively like that until we have split our predict these terminal nodes will tell us how we have come up with our r1 r2 r3 we would have recursively split our predictor space right so we call it greedy it's called greedy it's called greedy because at each step let's say this step of splitting this 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 method this me method right the best split is made at that particular step we do not look forward to say oh yeah maybe if we split it yeah it's going to affect something at the bottom and then it's going to no we do not care about that we are like we are at this at, at this step 
what is best for this step that's why it's great it's great because it looks at that step and doesn't care about any other step what is best for this step and then it splits gets to this step it doesn't care about what happened before what is going to happen in the future it doesn't care at that particular step what is the best split and then it splits when it gets here what is the best split it splits according to that particular part according to that particular node it doesn't care about the other nodes right um so after it is after after it has done that it has split split our our predictor space so first a predictor is chosen so we choose a predictor we'll be like okay maybe we are, we are first predicting over years years of experience like we did previously that is the first predictor that we are going to use to split this the, to split our observations right when we have chosen chosen then the predictor we will then choose a cutoff point like previously we had years 4.5 so this is the the cutoff point right cutoff point that's the cutoff point and then we'll split the predictor space into the two regions using that cutoff point and we are going to split it into one region this side is going to be uh, so let's just say less than s less than s so this is going to be our predictor xj that we have chosen the jth predictor less than s so on the right hand side we are going to have one region we are going to have all all observations such that the predictor is less than s and then on the right hand side we are going to have all observations such that the predictor is greater than or equal to s we split it like that if you remember if you recall from the previous video that's exactly what we did right and we'll do that this cut off point this cut off point is chosen such that such that this split here this cut off point it will lead to the greatest decrease in rss so we want to choose the one that leads the greatest decrease the greatest decrease in rss in rss right that is if we consider all predictors and all possible values of cutoff points for all those predictors for each of the predictors and choose the predictor we will choose the predictor and the cutoff point that that the tree has the lowest rss so here because we have years we have hits and stuff like that we will we'll, we'll look at them and then we will look at the cutoff points and we we'll say which one is going to lead to the at this point at this point no matter where it's going in the future we do not care we are just saying at this point should we choose years or should we choose hits which one is going to lead to the greatest decrease in rss right and you know our rss is we defined it above here we defined above here right we're going to say for each of all the predictors right for each of the predictors which one should we choose should we choose yes should we choose hits? should we choose age which one should we choose and then we are going to say okay which is going to be the cutoff point that results in the greatest decrease in rss right and then the one that results in the greatest rss that's the one that we use at this point and do not we do not care what's going to happen next in the next section we are going to do the same in this part here okay we have done this years so we have a collection of our observations that have fallen to this left side for this collection of observations that have fallen to the left side of left side of let's say years which one is going to result in the greatest decrease in rss is it hits is it age is it gender whatever it is that's the one that we choose there and then we split the observations again and we keep carrying with the observations that are now there at that particular step to get the one that results in the lowest rss so basically in greater detail for any j for any region j and for any s cutoff point we define a pair of um half planes so we have half plane number one js is going to be equal to x such that our xj is less than s and we have our r2 as a function of what j and s of course it's going to be j the region number j and s such that x given not a like region number j like predictor number j predictor j is greater than or equal to s the cutoff point so predictor number j so region number one is formed by choosing the right predictor and the right cutoff point and it will be observations such that for that predictor j the observations are less than s 
for region number two, it's also a function of J and S, which means for that predictor that we would have chosen, we want to get all observations such that for the predictor we chose, let's say years, is greater than or equal to S for those observations. And we seek, seek the value of J and S that minimize that minimize that are going to minimize this um, the equation x and x i an element of the of the region one yeah we're basically just comparing we're, we're just comparing um, if if I if I had put this observation in in number one in region number one, what was going to be the difference with the mean? That's basically what it means. Plus, um, if I had put this observation, if I had said this observation is not, not, not it's just region number two, if I had put this observation is as, as part as a part of region number two, what was going to be? No, uh, this is going to be y, y r two at squared. So that's basically what we want to minimize. We want to minimize the error of putting it in the wrong region or putting it in the wrong region, right? When we have the minimum, when we have the minimum, then we can we will, we will solve for the J and the S that we're going to use, right? And these are summations, which means for each observation, we're going to do the same. And we'll be like, mm, maybe using years is not the best one. When we use years, when you use hits, that's the best split. So basically, that's what we're saying, yeah. And this 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 part is just the mean as we said so this is the mean for r1 and this is the mean mean for r2 yeah so finding the values of j and s that minimize the equation can be done quickly especially when the number of features p is not too large next we repeat the process looking for the best predictor and best cutoff point in order to split the data even further like we're doing here even further we've split it here and then even further, we'll split it, we'll split it, we'll split, keep splitting, right? So as to minimize RSS within each resulting result, resulting regions. So this time, instead of splitting the, uh, the entire predictor space, we split one of the two previously identified regions. So we now have three regions like here. We, yeah, years it split it into two. But then when we get here, it's going to split it into further two like this so we now have ignore the other ones we now have two regions like this region this region and this region and the split by by years you know what i mean we have now split by years and then we split by hits like previously when we split by hits we split it twice and we got three regions we got three regions that's basically what it's saying here um so we, we again look at the split of one of the regions keep seeing are we can we still minimize rs can we still minimize rss we can continue doing that minimizing rss and continuing these splits continuing these splits until we have reached a stopping criterion so we can say our stopping criterion is going to say in each region we need we need to have um uh what to call this at, let's just say at most five observations that can be our um, our criterion we can say in each region we need to have at most five so if we still have like 10 yeah we'll split until we have at most like five observations in a region that's one that's one stopping criterion uh that's one crit criterion or you can define the criterion just depending on the use case that you're using there that you're doing there right so once the regions have been created like these r ones r2 r3 and r4 once we have cre created them we predict the response for a given test observation using the mean of the training observations in that particular region uh, to which the observation belongs so that's basically what we are doing so a tree a, a tree where we're saying something let me quickly just draw a tree because this video is going to be a bit long but if we say observation number uh what about this predictor number one less than t and then we split on it we split on it like that and then when we get here we can say x2 less than or equal to t2 there can be a split here 
and then we say this this being, brings us number a region number one and this gives us region number two we can also say oh yeah x1 we can split on x1 again less than equal to another value t3 maybe that's the one that gives us the lowest RISS at that point if it's if it's yes we'll get a region number three and then when we get here we can say x2 less than or equal to t4 create another region here f r4 and our r5 maybe those are the splits that we have done let's put this on a cartesian plane right let's put this on a let's quickly put it on a cartesian plane this is going to be x1 x2 so let's follow the let's follow the splits the first one was saying x1 less than or equal to t1 okay x1 less than or equal to t1 let's go to t1 maybe t1 is here so this is the split let's split the region we said x1 less than or equal to t1 these guys are going to say yes we are less than or equal to t1 then they are going to be split on x2 x2 less than or equal to t2 so it's going to be t2 here there is the split Cha. so these guys that say yes we are less than or equal to t2 these guys what they're saying is yes we are less than or equal to t1 they're saying um yes our x1 is less than or equal to t1 and yes our x2 is less than or equal to t2 so this can can say maybe yes our years are less than or equal to t1 and yes our hits if x2 is hits our hits are less than or equal to t2 these are the people here and they form this region r1 sorry for that uh oh no uh made a mistake there so this is supposed to be this is supposed to be r r1 this is region number one cool let's follow it let's follow it through and then yeah it's, you see you, you see what happens here it says if you're not less than or equal to t2 yeah in the region r2 so this is r2 so this is composed of people so r2 is composed of people that are less than or equal to t1 on, on the x1 axis yes but they are greater than t2 on the x2 axis yes perfect these are the r2 people and then on the right hand side of this these are the people that said no we are not less than or equal to t1 so they are the people that are on the right hand side of x1 so we are dealing in with this big space here so let's go split it again and then it says but if you are less than or equal to t3 you are falling into this region r3 so which means there's a t3 here actually there's a t3 that splits r uh, that splits x1 and it says oh yeah okay cool yeah you're, you're greater than t1 fine but then if you are less than t3 you are going to fall into this region x3 r3 so this is our r3 and then for those guys that are greater than t1 on the x1 axis and greater than t3 on still on that x1 axis so these are the guys that are on the right of t3 they are going to be split on x2 x2 less than or equal to t4 so let's say our t4 is here we are going to have a split like this so it's going to say those that are less than this t4 value on the x2 axis we are going to be region number four and the ones that are greater than that are on the right hand side on the north side of this of this split they are going to be region number five so this is region number five so that's how our predictor space this predictor space has been split into different regions that's how it has been split into different regions like that so we have our region number one number two number three and for each region now we calculate the mean what is the mean for this region mean for this region mean for this region for this region for this region now anything that falls in that region will get the predicted value as the mean so if we have a test if we have a test variable we have now we have a test that we have never seen before we have never seen this um thing before right we'll be like no we have never seen this we have never seen this uh, test observation. Now we are asked to test for a test observation. What we're basically going to, going to do is we are going to see which region it falls under. For your test observation, I, is your X1 less than T1 or whatever it is? Do you have this number of years? Do you have the number of years? We look at those observations, all, all those uh, predictors. We look at these predictors and we'll see which region it falls into. Or oh, this X star, this test fall, falls into region number three. So we predict your salary to be the mean of the region number three. That's basically it. That's basically it. That's how we do our prediction in regression trees. But then someone, someone will say, 
this uh, maybe some people will say won't this overfit the data because if we keep splitting 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 maybe at the bottom here we are going to end up with so many regions we are going to end up with one observation in each region in each region so we end up with let's say we have n observations we end up with n regions which means we have overfit right because each observation now has its own region we have overfit the data that is true it is possible to do that if our stopping criterion doesn't stop it before it gets here to overfitting it's possible so in the next video we're going to see how we can prune our tree so that it does not overfit